um, I'm speaking to you today from Brussels, Belgium, where I live. Um, I'm originally from Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it was great to, to produce this work there in Richmond. Um, I just wanted to contextualize the exhibition with uh, some research images uh, and also some previous work and then go a little bit more in depth with um, some of the specific aspects of the artwork itself. Um, I really look forward to any questions or discussions that you might have. So please uh, uh, note them down and we can have a talk afterwards. So I'll just jump into it. Uh, you can hear me fine and everything, right? Good, okay, great. Um, let's see here. There we are. There we go. Okay, so um, the first thing I, I kind of want to address is like starting very broadly is, uh, well, a lot of my work is about air, wind, as phenomena of the atmosphere. Um, and for me, it's always um, just sort of sublime to think about the fact that, well, all life as we know it uh, exists within this relatively thin, thin membrane of gases, which are held to the surface of the earth uh, by the force of gravity. So this is an image uh, from NASA just showing, yeah, how, how thin and how precarious that kind of is in a certain way. Um, as you might know, air is, uh, is a fluid and uh, just like water is, uh, but it's just one that's less dense. Um, and so there's a way in which just like fish are swimming in the water, we're sort of swimming through the air. But what I find very in interesting too is that, well, almost all of our senses are made to, to, uh, to tune it out. So um, uh, we can't see the movement of the air directly with our eyes, even though every time we even move our hands through the air, uh, it creates turbulence patterns and ripples behind it. Um, we can only see it indirectly. So for example, how the leaves on a tree rustle um, or the formation of clouds, for instance. Um, and it mediates many things um, in relationship to our senses as well. So for example, the only reason you hear my voice is because uh, the, the speakers on your computer are perturbing or vibrating the air between uh, the speaker and your eardrums, which are then translating those vibrations into the sound of my voice. Um, so it's really conveyed through the air and, and smell, for instance, is another um, aerial phenomena, let's say. Um, but uh, for me, like, uh, I, I've, it's become the central focus of my work gradually over years, uh, over the last 10 years. And, um, and it's often this question like, well, I think what draws me in and compels me is um, the challenge to, to bring it to, to a scale that we can experience it and, and grasp it and, uh, and give form to it. And for me already, that is an analog for, for producing art. You know, how, how do we give form to those things that don't yet have one, Wh whether it might be other underlying and latent dynamics within society, um, within our subconscious or consciousness. And, and then in this case, well, just within our physical environment as well. Um, so the image that you see on the top left is um, a turbulence pattern that's being created by the island of Madeira um, off the coast of Africa and the Atlantic. Um, and you can see there's this kind of like um, uh, zigzag or um, inter interwoven sort of vortex pattern. And this is called the von Karman double street vortex. And it's very important because it proves that nature tends towards an instability but that instability is predictable uh, rather than just saying that, well, it always goes for an equilibrium, you know, that nature isn't equal or always uh, perfectly balanced, let's say, um, in the movement of fluids. Uh, and the way that we observe then, like, how do we, how do we make that, you know, palpable? And, and one way that a lot of engineers who are working with aerody aerodynamics, aeronautics would uh, design cars and airplanes would create wind tunnels, introduce smoke and lasers in order to kind of slice through that turbulence pattern and create a two-dimensional image 
as you might see when you're at a club or a, or a concert, you know, it's the same phenomena. Uh, so you see on the bottom left here, that image is, um, image is taken in a, in a wind tunnel. And we would also be able to see the same uh, phenomena in, uh, in, in walking down the street. If you look at the way that uh, flags waver in the wind, you notice that they're sort of moving like this. And that is because there's invisible vortexes forming on either side of the flag to create that kind of undulation. And it's the flag pole is, which is actually producing the turbulence. And the central image here is actually an artwork I made where I created a, a wind tunnel inside of the gallery. Um, and it was trying to explain why does the, the flag of every country fly in the wind. And uh, I produced this model, which is uh, a kind of a bullet shaped model, which also produces a turbulence shape, uh, the von Karman double street vortex turbulence pattern. So I think that, you know, there are many kind of metaphors and nuances that, that can already be introduced here. Um, so, you know, already I've spoken about three different scales, right? So like the geographic scales, the scale of the city and the scale um, that's observable in relationship to our bodies as wind tunnels. And this is oftentimes what I'm trying to do when I work with wind as well. And uh, one phenomena that really kind of like um, compelled me uh, in a in uh, earlier work uh, that kind of speaks to this is um, thinking about how large movements of wind shape landscapes. So this is a uh, um, they're called Aeolian landscapes, and they take their name from Aeolus, who's the Western god of the wind, the most important Greek god. And um, here we see uh, the Sahara, for instance. I visited the Sahara Desert in Morocco. Um, to kind of see one of these landscapes that's really shaped by the wind itself in 2017. Um, so the wind is a kind of form giver. Um, and here I produced this artwork then three years later, kind of inspired by that experience uh, called Stock Weather. So I tried to kind of, again, bring that down to scale and create an Aeolian landscape of my own. So inside of this octagonal shape is um, is a, a, it's filled with sand and there are eight different wind tunnels all around it and uh, they're blowing that sand inside until it starts to form this kind of miniature desert-like landscape. But the uh, what's really controlling also the speed of those fans are fluctuations in the stock market. So um, what we really end up having is this kind of landscape which is short, shaped by the global economy. And it's a kind of desolate landscape, a kind of desert landscape. Um, and for me, it's also thinking about, well, why do we experience um, uh, the global economy and uh, the global climate uh, in the same way as something that happens to us, as something that nobody has complete control over, even though one is entirely man-made and the other one is a natural phenomenon. So trying to kind of tie that knot a little bit in, in, in the artwork. Um, it's significant that the artwork, that, that this artwork has eight wind tunnels um, because eight is the, um, it's the cardinal directions that you see in wind roses, which also relate to the compass directions themselves. Um, and uh, so, um, this was something that was always very important, like where, where does the wind come from, where does it originate, where does it go, and this was especially important to understand, especially during the period of empire, of colonialism, uh, so the wind rose itself is often associated with the transmission uh, of power to have that knowledge, and that's why I think it's no coincidence that in the Vatican, if you see St. Peter's Basilica, where the Pope would address uh, you know, the kingdom of God on earth in this, uh, this uh, main courtyard of, of the basilica, that it is shaped like a windrose and in the center is an obelisk, another important point of um, conveying of power. And so each one of these icons is actually related to a specific wind. You'll see to the left is the one called the Scirocco wind, which in fact is one that I'm working with now for the Science Gallery in Venice, uh, thinking about um, how it blows Saharan dust over the Mediterranean into Europe and, and how that might be a way that we think about all of the different things that come over the Mediterranean with the, uh, maybe it's an analog for thinking about migration and so on. Uh, below is one of the first maps of, of uh, the wind patterns, um, which, were, which are the trade winds essential during the colonial period, as I had said earlier. 
Um, and now another, you know, going back to the scale of the body and of architecture, this is just a sketch really of an upcoming work that actually started before coronavirus, but, you know, like if we're inside of a building, and, and it's also very related to the work there at 1708, um, if we're in a building, it's really like a, a closed microclimate of its own. Um, especially the more sustainable buildings get um, in order to reduce their uh, costs of heating and cooling, you usually can't open a window or close a window. Instead, you have HVAC systems, uh, like all these ventilation, uh, that is just recycling the same volume of air throughout, which of course becomes a problem, you know, when we have things like a aerial um, virus. Uh, but in any case, like uh, in this project that I'm starting to develop now with uh, uh, consultants who are working with um, yeah, HVAC and also VR is like, how can we read the conditions of labor through the movement of air? Because the body, bodies in a space are creating uh, heat as we see these thermal columns which rise and create circulation. Machines are also producing heat. Um, so how does the exchange between um, people and people, people and machines, machines and machines tell us about what it means to work um, in a space today? Oh yeah, this is the image of uh, what I was speaking about earlier, HVAC systems and, and ecological buildings and so on. Um, so this is like not a new thinking, however, um, uh, and this was, was the central point in thinking about the exhibition for 1708 is like the fourfold symmetry, right? And like there's this old idea of, um, old idea of, uh, of humorism, this idea that, well, um, the, our bodies, are uh, containing four different fluids, uh, phlegm, blood, black bile, and yellow bile. And uh, they correspond to the four different elements of fire, um, water, earth, and air through four different qualities of wetness, dryness, uh, coolness, and hotness. <laughs> um, and good health was thought to be the balance of these four um, fluids. So if you were choleric, that, mean, that meant that you were very hot. And so you needed to be exposed to a cold wind, for instance. And this was incorporated into different um, architectures starting already in the 17th century uh, with uh, Academia Eolia um, by the Alp architect Garza Dori, uh, just outside of Venice there. So this is the advent of ventilation as uh, related to hygiene and personal health. The image in the center is actually another way that I think that the movement of air affects our physiology and also our psychological states. This is an image of um, the inner ear, the cochlea, and that regulates our sense of balance, our sense of orientation. And it's known that while certain winds can, can start to drive people mad, like the Mistral in the south of France, because it blows constantly, it's even been used as a defense in court. So that instability that it produces often, sometimes results in mental instability as well. Um, and it's all, it's, I think it's also interesting that it's shaped like a, a spiral as a vortex as the fluids also form uh, vortices. Um, this was the working sketch. So this was like, sometimes I make images that are maybe not like super romantic, but in a way they like are, are working sketches that I try to develop my projects from. And this is really thinking about, okay, like how do we combine like this idea of like creating a microclimate and an atmospheric phenomena, chaotic weather system. Um, and how do we relate that to the body, bring it to the scale of the body through everyday um, uh, appliances and also using uh, air quality control sensors. So here we have then the exhibition. And um, you know, what was really important for me was like a lot of these things are, are found objects, right? Or meaning they come from other places and it was wonderful that 1708 could kind of arrange all of these elements. Um, because just as we uh, are not often sensitive to the fluctuations of, of air and wind, um, and I wanted to create that sensitivity to that, to kind of create that, um, that that's really the result of the artwork, in fact, is the affect of the weird weather system that's created in the gallery that we start to become tuned to and see as an artwork or as an aesthetic effect. How can we also see something that we, that we also normally don't notice, like all of these appliances that are used for climate control also as in an aesthetic way, suddenly they come to light. And, 
uh, for me, like one of the definitions of a good work of art, you know, is that it, it kind of works on your perception afterwards, right? So you start, maybe now you'll see all of these climate control things uh, after you leave the gallery, after the show in a completely different way. And for me, that would be like yeah, a success, let's say, for the work. Um, and in the center is another kind of borrowed or found object with, from the VCU medical uh, campus, and it's of the lungs. So this is a, a medical model of, of the bronchia of the lungs. And this was uh, yeah, the way to bring the architecture into the scale of the body. And it was important you know, to also bring the, the cooling, the air conditioning is coming from the, the building. So suddenly the building itself becomes part of the artwork. Um, yeah, and relating to all of the different associations that it might have, right? So here's just like a very quick sketch or background drawing. This is, this, there are two words that are kind of rubbed in here. One is ruach and one is rauch. And ruach is in Genesis, the first breath of God that brings all of existence into being. Even before light, there was a breath over the dark voids and the waters that kind of created um, the earth. And, and this is ancient Hebrew. And then and I've translated, transliterated it into English. And rauch is um, spelled in the, in the actual German is um, also a quality of air, but that comes from burning something, a dampness or a smoke in the air that comes from burning. So here we have already two associations of wind as a creation, creative and vital force, and wind as a destructive um, and chaotic element. And here it's kind of like a root loop, so it's not rauch, it's not ruach, and so on. And this is what the actual weather system looks like. So this is what the interior weather system looks like, which I brought from Belgium. Um, on the top is an air quality control sensor. It's controlled by a Raspberry Pi, which is a small computer, um, which you can use. Um, to, uh, yeah, a small computer that controls many things. And what it's controlling here are relays. So from the sensor, there's different inputs coming in. Um, it's measuring the humidity and temperature primarily, but also pressure. And then um, it's telling, it's sending a signal, okay, like humidifier, you turn on, dehumidifier, you turn on. But it's like what you typically have in your house with the thermostat, but in, what I'm trying to do is not create an equilibrium, but rather to create chaos. <laughs> um, and this is the real-time visualization of that. So um, in the center is the present and it moves outwards into the past, um, which I think is an, an interesting association of history and time as a spiral also. And uh, the blue line is humidity, the red line is... Um, uh, so the red line is temperature and the blue line is humidity. Uh, so that's that's that part of the work. Um, and yeah, what I was saying earlier, uh, here on the left is an instance that you can see like already how people have thought since uh, Hegel about time as a spiral rather than as a straight line. So trying to measure uh, political history as a repetition, uh, which was an important notion um, adopted in Marxism by Lenin, by Luxembourg and by others so that you could try to act before the things repeated, <laughs> um, try to anticipate what might be happening um, uh, if you know that things are reoccurring, but never quite in the same way, right? It's never in the same form. Um, so yeah, and uh, the middle is a wind tunnel, wind tunnel image, again, of the Von Karman Double Street Vortex. And on the right is you know, how this is inscribed in, in ornamental motifs. So if you ever go to Chicago, you can see uh, architect Louis Sullivan was also putting vortices all over his facades, which I think is appropriate because buildings are constantly confronting the wind and are eroded by them. So they, he found a way to acknowledge that as well. Um, and with that, I'll just close. Thank you very much. <laughs>